Hey everyone, welcome to this student success interview. I'm Garth Laidlaw with Port Prep and I help art students complete their portfolios to get into their top art schools across the globe. Port Prep can help you create the absolute best art portfolio that you can possibly make and have the best chance of getting into your favorite art schools. We have courses on figure drawing, character design, perspective, animation, storyboarding. We even have courses that deal specifically with Sheridan College's animation portfolio, which is notoriously difficult to get into and which is what I graduated from. One of the primary problems that we've noticed with students not getting into their top art colleges is the accountability to produce work in a, on a consistent basis. And this is exactly what we've created these courses for. When you sign up for one of Port Prep's courses, we draw directly on top of our students' work to make corrections and also record all of our online meetups and video lectures to send to the students so that you can have it forever. Port Prep is incredibly proud of our success rate with getting students into their top art colleges and universities. And so please have a look at our testimonials page. We also offer one-on-one -on -one art mentorships as well that are much more customized to your specific artistic goals. Without further ado, let's listen to this student interview. Hey Sarah, how's it going? Hello, good, how are you? Pretty good. So how are you feeling now that it's all over? Ah, <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was about, what, a, a month to wait before you found out and uh, I guess you were pretty nervous during that time? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, this is great. So you made the incredibly, incredibly difficult year, the highest year I think ever that, you know, especially for international, which you are, um, of, you know, approaching that 95% mark. So. A huge congrats from all in Port Prep about that. Thank I hope, you. I hope that feels really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so just just life drawing, hand drawing, and one from personal work. Huh, that's kind of shocking. Um, yeah. So first of all, I would love to ask, like, what um what brought you to animation? What kind of inspired you to want to go to Sheridan, or apply to other animation schools for that matter? Um, so I had a very, very long journey in deciding on animation. Yeah. So, um, I mean, originally I just liked drawing cartoon, cartoony stuff, uh, digital art just for fun. Uh, and that was like up until 10th grade. I just wanted to keep it as a hobby. Um, cause I was also a little worried cause I heard it was, it was an unstable industry. And, um, so I just wanted to stay away from that. Um, mm. even though. I hadn't actually done too much research into it. That's just what I'd heard from adults all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I started looking into other careers. Um, I, I did environmental science for a bit. I started, I did like a rooftop garden because I was pretty sure that was where I wanted to go. And then I was like, well, maybe I could double major in like animation. Mm -hmm. And then over the summer with COVID, I kind of had a lot more time to think. And then I finally decided like, I just want to do animation. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. So you kind of decided just this summer actually. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. So this is your first time applying? Yes, yeah. So okay. this is my first time with Sheridan. And actually I found Sheridan like 100% by chance. Oh. Um, I was just looking at other portfolios like CalArts portfolios. And yeah. uh, my mom was looking with me and was like, what's that one Sheridan? I'm like I've never heard of it, but we can look at it. And I was like, "Wow, that's that's an impressive portfolio." Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So we we looked into it more, and we we saw some of their industry day reels, yeah. and I was like, "Wow," because I, I was I was my best way of judging a, a school was basically by how their uh, student animation reels looked yeah. to see like what what quality were the students being taught. Yeah. Um, and Sheridan's was just by far the best. Okay. Uh, wow, interesting. Even above CalArts, you would say. Um, actually, I think I had a little. Okay, so to be fair, I think I had some trouble finding some CalArts reels. Okay. Um, so maybe CalArts was better, but I also didn't okay. want to go that far. Yeah. <laughs> the so, West I'm Coast. On... You're on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you just need to kind of go up north and a little west, and then you're there. Um, okay. That's great. Um, yeah, I mean, I've heard I've heard great things about CalArts too. I don't really know. I don't know a ton of people that go there, but um 
Yeah, their portfolio is so different too. So it's just kind of like, it's much more open. Sheridan is so precise in what they're asking everyone to do. So um, that's kind of, and it's my background. So that's that's kind of why we specialize in that. But um, okay, so let's, let's have a look at your portfolio. So if there's anything that you want to mention in regards to like tips to students as we go, uh, feel free. I'm sure you kind of have lots of thoughts about the whole thing um, now that it's all over. Um, I, to be completely honest, like this is a very candid chat, right? And I am shocked that you lost even two marks from your figure drawing. Um, <laughs> I like, I remember looking at your figure drawing and being like, uh, okay, I don't know, like this is really, like the gesture quality of this is really great. Like even there's emotion there, there's props, like great like compression and, um, yeah, just really curious what they're looking for. Um, was there anything that was surprising to you in your score sheet? Um, kind of the personal work, but I like I, I look at it again, and I think I kind of get why. Mm -hmm. um, and we can we are we going through them like each? Yeah, one? we'll go through man okay, or so. yeah from the top to the bottom sort of. But yeah, we'll we'll definitely get to that uh, for sure. Okay. But yeah, really great figure drawing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think where I might have lost points was like when you when you look at some of them, uh, not mine, but just in general, when you look at other people's, there's like an immediate readability to it, and there, or there's an immediate like wow factor. I think mine were accurate and the line quality was okay, but it didn't have an immediate wow factor like some of the others. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I and I think that's just from lack of experience. Like I practiced figure study, but not until like this year yeah I, I still feel like i should have practiced it more <laughs> don't we all figure drawing yeah. is just the endless study that we'll be doing to our grave so don't worry <laughs> there's plenty of time <laughs> yeah all right let's have a look at your hand nice yeah that's great so this one was i know that's a great mark um yeah Curious, even again, why they took a mark off. I think these are, are great. The, the quality of the image could have been a little bit better, maybe. I don't think that's why they took a mark off, but um, it feels like a little bit low quality, maybe. I'm not sure. Was yeah. it a scan or a photo? Um, I think it was a scan. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I didn't want it to distort at all. But yeah. it could have been like down at the fingers. You see, like I had to fix um, some of the fingers on the first one, so it looks a little muddy. Oh. I think. So that, that could have been why, because that two race. Um, and like, if you look at the uh, kind of left fingers to the right fingers, it um, like some are thicker than others. So I think it was just like a little bit, the line quality could have been better. I also okay. should have drawn them bigger because I mm. drew them like about that big. Oh, okay. <laughs> size of hand. So I think it would have helped to draw them better or yeah. uh, larger rather. Yeah. Um, but in your underdrawing, it, we can see a little bit of it, but I'm guessing there was more. I, I can see like a little fragment, I can see a little uh, metacarpal here, but um, not like, um, there's probably stuff going down here maybe, I'm not sure. Um, maybe that was just lost in the scan. Mm -hmm. Great thumb detail, we can see that thumb <laughs> bone really clearly in the in the ulna and radius too, so that's great. Yeah, really great hands though. Um, and then what's the next room? So I think it's the, yeah, the character rotation. Yes, okay. This one was a <laughs> while back. I remember looking at this one way back when, so it's cool. It's really great that it's, you got worked on this one, right? Yeah, yeah. So, wow. I, I love this character. I thought it was such a fun, unique character. And of course, we see his structure. This was a nice workaround, eh? I'm glad they appreciated this. That, you know, if you have a character that has a bunch of stuff or a cloak or something coming on the back, to just draw through it, draw the structure anyways, as if you're, 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 kind of showing x-ray um, because yeah. that way you're not, you know, it's not like you're trying to hide anything. I think that was a great solution there. Yeah. And even the bird. Wow. <laughs> we get a rotation of a bird too. I love that. <laughs> it's funny that in this one, he's facing us. <laughs> he's like looking directly at the camera. <laughs> yeah. Really clever character. What made you think of this, Sarah? Uh, that it was from actually a story I'm developing. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, there's um, fawns in kind of an old Western setting. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, which I think I have a feeling we're going to see more of uh, in the personal work section. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, really, really fun also to combine animalistic elements with the humanoid um, because usually it's like a human character or an animal character, but it's like, well, this way you can have nice aspects of both. Um, so I'm really glad they appreciated this and just excellent line quality too. That's really, really clear. Nice. Um, so I think the short animation is next. Here it is. Oh, yes. I remember looking at this one a whole bunch. Um, I remember you had, you had two great ones that you were considering and I'm like, wow, this is hard to choose. Um, really, really happy with how this turned out. Um, just has such a great bounciness to it. You managed to do a lot in four seconds. Wow, just amazing. May as well be 3D. It looks like it's almost 3D. That's awesome. What, yeah, what's actually, up? Oh, oh un unrelated, but I, there were a few 3D ones in there, like some other students did 3D ones and yeah. they looked incredible. Yeah, um, yeah. One of our students did a, did a 3D one and I was just like blown away. Um, for, for yours, um, what, how did you get this idea? Uh, I just played around with a lot of ideas. I think there was like, like, so I just started drawing like little keyframes in my sketchbooks. And then I would, if I thought one might work out, then I would animate it a little more. Okay. Um, so I think, yeah, there was those two. And then I think there might've been some other ones that I ended up not using, oh, but wow. I just kind of played with ideas until I liked it. Yeah. Oh, amazing. That's great. It turned out so well. And what software did you use to animate it? A uh, Toon Boom Harmony. Oh yeah, Toon Boom. Okay, great. That's awesome. That's really, really solid. Um, I think the storyboard is next. This one. Oh yes, I remember this very clearly. Um, hopefully, what did you get on your storyboard? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, this <laughs> is really, really great storyboard. I remember seeing this, it, 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 it changed so much. Well, I mean, it, it the, the idea was the same. But the progression, I remember seeing it develop week by week and I was like, wow, this like it came from your early sketches. It came so far um, and we kept working on those character models, getting them on model. And yeah, they're just they look really great. Is there anything you want to share about this this process of the storyboard? I'm guessing you probably also did multiple iterations of the story. Yeah, actually, um, so I, uh, originally I was having a lot of trouble brainstorming my storyboard because I was worried about it being too much like uh, don't judge a book by its cover because I wasn't sure how picky they were going to be about that. Yeah. It turns out they weren't very picky, so that's good. Yeah. But um, I basically just did a bunch of thumbnail sketches of different potential stories. So I had like them dancing, I had them getting a massage, just like completely random, just little thumbnails uh, that could kind of like spark an idea. Yeah. Um, and then I, I got the one with the geode and then I played around with that a little mm. uh, in sketches. Um, but yeah, um, I guess other tips is like um, whenever when I do the storyboards, I don't do the text. And when I show other people, I don't show them any text with it because they should be able to understand what's going on without text. Otherwise, it's it's not going to. That's that's a great tip, and you're gonna you're gonna be hearing that echoed a lot among your storyboard teachers when you're in Sheridan. So, that's fantastic that you were thinking that way. Yeah. Yeah, and so, you did the reverse story too, right? Where the beauty is only skin deep makes you think of like somebody who maybe or somebody or something that is beautiful and attractive, and then you find that they're evil, evil or something. But you switch that. And that was really cool. I really liked that. And I remember there was some degree of risk of like, hmm, is this the right, like, is this gonna pass their detection of like, yeah, but that, but it, it goes both ways, right? It looks like this very normal looking rock. And then we find out actually, you know, it's beautiful on the inside. Really, really great message and way to kind of turn that story a little bit. And amazing line quality, very similar to your character design. Uh, yeah, really love those. You've really got like a great, like very very clear storyboard so well done thank you um so the last one is uh the lid the these two oh yeah this one um how do you do on these ones I, I can't remember oh great okay awesome yeah i remember 
So for every for anyone watching this one, we, I remember we were going back and forth and fussing with the the various elements of it for a while, and <laughs> there was a part of me that's like, I think this was perfect like th two or three sessions ago. <laughs> like in my mind, I'm like, I think this is already perfect. Like if you change the foliage and stuff, like that's great. And if you feel more confident with it, of course that's good. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe it all added so much. But I remember this was a really strong one from the beginning, and then you're kind of tinkering very specifically with those details. And, and, you know, maybe that that was the determining factor, maybe all those those extra steps, but this one always felt very solid. Um, how did you feel about, about, oh yeah, and then this one, the underwater. How did you feel about these ones and, and what were your kind of um, processes? Yeah, so, it, I mean, they were very difficult. Layout is uh, not usually my thing. This exterior or, or interior layout, actually, yeah. um, was the first perspective line drawing I've ever done. <laughs> Wow. So Holy. I was very scared going into it because I, I wasn't sure. I actually redid the line art three times because uh, the first time it was too rough. The second time I did the perspective wrong. Uh, and then the third time was uh, this one. Wow. <laughs> three times. And your first. That's crazy. I, you must. Did you have some good resources or references or what, what was it that helped kind of get you to this level of comfortability with perspective well definitely your class oh, so great. that was I, I kept like going back and referencing the videos and uh stuff like that and like once once i started understanding how perspective worked it, it made more sense yeah um it was just like never doing it before it was like mm. what are the lines for where, where do i put them yeah like it was just oh, very wow. i'm so daunting. glad that was helpful yeah. yeah and and another thing i used uh was pinterest like I, I had lots and lots of references which helped both with like inspiration and with like great um, just accuracy yeah um, and yeah um another tip for for layout is having a theme um yeah. so like the outdoor layout was irish castle ruins and the indoor layout was aquarium yeah um and by having a theme it kind of aquarium helps. really i couldn't tell <laughs> But yeah, it just kind of helps with like clarity and yeah. and stuff like that. So. Mm, that's great. And I think that's a great idea too, to, to pick a theme and sort of dig into that. And I love how, to the extent that you really went for it. Like I always say that, especially with animation, that if you're gonna do something and, and, and have some kind of little story over, overarching element over the whole thing, motif, um, just really, really go for it. Like more so than you, than in person maybe would happen in real life. And the, 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 the final um, resolve of this, I guess, for me was even this little guy, like even the zipper thing, for some reason, I just love that little detail because like, you know, even without that, like this is a very dominant, like this person loves their job and is just like an aquarium master, but even their little backpack, it's just, just like hammering at home. So what a, what a great idea. Like every little, every element is thought through here um there's nothing that's just kind of an accident it's all specifically designed for this environment so that's really great and this too you've got like these kind of almost like these fallen gods and old old ruins here um and then a pet and then a uh, unicorn uh so it's just kind of you've got all those those celtic elements you've even got the four leaf clover uh motif there um yeah just really great amazing job sarah Thank you. Um, and 100% on those ones, so that's great that it paid off. Um, okay, so that's that's the main part of the portfolio. Let's have a look at the personal work. Um, oh yeah, here we are. So here's your character design. Some expressions, the full color version. Uh, and this page is just amazing. Like for everyone watching, like you think you've done sketches, like look at, look at the amount of sketches Sarah's done here to kind of get to the place where you know she could be confident in her character it's just all of the different things that you could consider from like the staff to the horns to like this is just an amazing concept art kind of breakdown of how you were thinking about this just like in math you need to show your work it's the same thing for art um yeah really really great sarah this must have taken a little while to uh assemble i guess and to figure out yeah, yeah, that one took a, a lot of time, but it, it was fun to do. <laughs> yeah, it looks really fun. Oh yeah, and we've got some more 
some different coloring this character and the same kind of breakdown and it's nice that you've included this all together because they are these two characters um and, and yeah a very similar treatment for each it's nice that you kind of have this overarching theme and, and, and kind of story that helps to unify everything. Let's see the next one. Oh yeah, here it is. <laughs> awesome. Oh, there's more too. Great. Wow. This is awesome. I like this. It was fun seeing this develop. Any tips for aspiring digital painters that want to create an equally epic scene? Um, so actually, let's see, there's a couple things. Uh, for the first one, um, I tried to keep a warm color theme, whereas for the second one, I wanted to do a competing color theme, so mm -hmm. cold versus warm. Yeah. Um, so I, and, and it made it look kind of almost rainbowy in a way mm -hmm. um, by doing that competition, which I, I thought was good, cool. Um, another thing with the shading, um, the first one had very intense lighting, so I used cell shading, but the second one had softer lighting, so I used kind of uh, a softer painting style for the shading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it does so feel that I, way. Yeah, and I, I just tr kind of try and like show two different methods um, in, in both the pieces. Um, one's kind of more exterior, one's more interior. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to use not only show those characters in their development, but use them in a scene. Mm -hmm. um, show I could I could kind of tell a story with them. Yeah. Yeah. So I also try and put a lot of little things in there. So like if you look at the background characters, each one has their own personality. Like there's some guys gambling in the background. Yeah. Um, there's like a shopkeeper. There's someone a cheering. Dad with his kid. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And yeah. I, I also do a lot of research uh, for everything. So like this one, I researched birds from Texas and then I basically uh, broke down what their body structure and wing structure is like so I could draw them on my own and simplify them wow. um, and make them kind of just move. I, I wanted every different pose for the bird to be very uh, unique and interesting and tell kind of little stories. Yeah, you've even got a turkey vulture in there, it looks like. Um, yeah, the bird, that's a great point. Each one is dynamic in the same way that, you know, when you're drawing the hand drawing, I always emphasize that each finger is slightly different because if it doesn't, if it's not, then it feels too like samey same. Um, same with your birds, like everyone is very unique. Even though, you know, you'd think, you know, birds can either have their wings up or have their wings down, but there's the rotation that you can do of each of them that can help to kind of make them feel very, uh, full of motion, I guess. Um, so that's that's really great. Love the diversity here, both of type of bird. And that's amazing that you even looked up the birds of Texas um, and then such great, yeah. I mean, you could have just a page of bird sketches as one of your personal <laughs> works. <laughs> that's great. Oh, these are really fun. I remember these. That was actually, I think that was one of my weaker pieces just because oh. um, it, it was like relatively simple. I mean, it was nice, but I think I could have included more um, and maybe made the layout a little more interesting. Like, hmm. I mean, I, I guess it was, it was like an okay piece. It wasn't bad, but it could have been better. Yeah, huh. I really like this one. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it it's a fun little study, a little bunch of little still lifes from uh, <laughs> Looks like a sushi, sushi and candy shop. Two great places. Um, this one is your your oil painting. You wanted to include a traditional piece, right? That was the kind yeah, of and that that was the other one I thought could have been better, just because I'm not very familiar with like oil painting. I've done I've done them in the past, but like I don't do them a lot, and I also thought like the composition could have been a bit better. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah. I mean, I, I I do still think it's good to show variety. That that's why I included those pieces. But yeah. at the same time, I was also doing things I wasn't as familiar with. Yeah. Uh, so it didn't turn out as I would have liked it to. Mm. Yeah. So that's that's, that's my guess, my best guess as to where I lost that one point. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it could be. Oh, and this one, this one was really neat. I'm glad that layout helped of the kind of seeing how to lay out the information. This is a really cool project. Do you want to tell us about what this was all about? Yeah, so these are all eyes of endangered animals or um, yeah, or threatened animals. Um, and I wanted to show 
both like like a bunch of different mediums so i i could kind of show some versatility in one piece yeah. so um there are 12 different mediums in this single piece which i thought would be good to show yeah. um and I, and also i i am still I, I really like environmental science still so i wanted to kind of do something that related to it yeah that's great i mean that's part of what the personal pieces are for right is to just kind of show your personality and show what you're interested in um so that's great i expect we'll see many more animals from you once you're in the program yeah <laughs> oh that's that one so okay so i know i remember this one seeing it all the way from its baby stages so let's have a look at this we're not gonna be able to hear this so turn it down but um so sarah did this grand actually let's bring it back to the beginning this animation sort of partly in in harmony and partly in after effects right all the animation was done in harmony but um effects like if you see the sunbeams and the water ripples was after effects yeah yeah and the kind of compositing was probably all in after effects but yeah just the yeah, this this blew me away as like just like for, for a student to include such amount of animation and and also one cohesive story not just a bunch of little cut up sequences but it's all one sequence and and the the amount of yeah just the sheer amount of animation that you were tackling in the sequence and the difficulty of it was just like holy and obviously you couldn't finish it entirely but it's still really nice to see um oh oh yeah yeah you include the concept art at the end that's a great idea <laughs> amazing that's great let's watch that one more time um so this this is another story that you're working on correct or is this just it was more of like a, a miniature story it, it was okay. um mainly to show like different colors and um things like yeah. that so mm -hmm. it, it was more for uh animation just yeah. to have to have a lot of different movements yeah and, and also yeah, carrying through forward your your ecological angle that you want to apply to your portfolio which is really great I didn't even realize that at the time, but with the Aquarian, it's it's a really nice themed fit. Yeah. You got pretty far in that sequence. Yeah, I was wanting to do the coral reefs around it, but I didn't have enough yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one you could have worked on for a long, long time, like to add all that stuff in. So really great job there. What a what a showstopper of a, of a piece. And then this, I was so impressed with this one too. I was just like, holy, <laughs> just the effort involved. But here is a 3D maquette that Sarah made of, um, of that character that we just saw. Yeah, so. I, I actually had seen videos in the past of like them, uh, people making 3D models of characters they were animating because it would help them with turning them around. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to kind of practice doing that. And mm -hmm. uh, so I made the character from story i didn't yeah. get to use them because i did it out of order but i wanted to show that i could do that yeah yeah that's amazing hey is this meant to not be choppy or did you just take individual pictures and rotate it i took individual pictures oh, okay i thought for a second maybe my video player was lagging and it's just a kind of continuous pan but um they, i mean it practically is that's so great you've got a lot of pictures of it um it's funny i mean some people just take a few pictures of different angles and different lighting and stuff and kind of put it on that image but it's nice that we got a little a little video turnaround of this such nice details um yeah so that's your portfolio so congrats again sarah from behalf of everyone at port prep this is amazing Thank um, you. really really great score really really difficult year and um any any last i guess tips or resources that you'd like to give like if you were doing the whole thing again and you had no knowledge of having done it what would you have told younger sarah about what how to approach this and what to do and what resources to look up um well for one practice uh, anatomy more um i kind of i think i delayed it a little too much in the beginning i was like it's it's far off and i'm already working on all these other pieces so and i i still did it but it was like i would do it for two days really intensely once a month yeah. Until it started becoming important and then I started doing it like weekly okay. and then daily as it grew closer. That's but I, I should have just had it like consistently from the mm -hmm. beginning. Which and is what, hard to what do. does practice anatomy mean for you? Like specifically what were you what kind of practices were you doing? Oh, figure studies. Oh, so drawing um, from figure, okay. 
Yeah, yeah, because that was that was not something that was a strong suit because also before this, I very, very rarely drew humans. Yeah. I, I primarily drew ponies and dragons and <laughs> things like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, great. but that's okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I guess um, another tip would be to like be prepared to give a lot of your time to the portfolio. Um, I gave basically my whole Christmas break to the personal work section. Mm. That was when I did a majority of my pieces for it. I had like okay. a schedule planned out for every day. Yeah. The only thing I didn't really work was Christmas, but otherwise, yeah. yeah. It's and good it was that you had a day off. <laughs> yeah, it, it paid off. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then after that, um, the Sheridan portfolio came out. So I didn't stop there. I just kept going into the Sheridan um, pieces. Mm -hmm. um also um uh, something good to do would be to do like a mock portfolio before the um requirements come out mm -hmm. um just kind of like what we did with court prep that was really helpful yeah. and some of the pieces i used some i didn't yeah because um, i thought i could do better but mm -hmm. um yeah like the the aquarium scene i used that one from court prep um the the turnaround i used um yeah th so things like that it's it's really helpful to just kind of know it a little uh before yeah. you do the, the actual one yeah definitely that's good and also like things do change from year to year but it's not mm -hmm. drastic you know it, it might be a slight change of wording or um maybe a little more clear what they're asking for but pretty much this is like been it's been this case for a long time the newest thing was basically the short animation i think three to five years ago they added that but other than that like this was very similar to what I did. I actually, when I was applying way back in the dark ages of 2007, um, you know, for the character rotation, we also had to do character poses and character expressions. But often a lot of people do those in the, like you did those in your personal work anyway. So you kind of have that in there, which is really great. Uh, but the figure drawing, hand drawing, um, storyboard is all identical, basically. Um, the perspective line drawings are much more fun now. It used to just be draw your bedroom and draw and with someone in it and then draw the room from that person's perspective. So they ended up getting like the thousands of drawings of bedrooms. And I think they're like, okay, let's maybe diversify this a little bit. Let's, let's get some more interesting backgrounds in here. So um, it's much more fun now, but personal artwork is the same, except now you can hand in a little bit more. Um, so yeah, things don't really change. So that's great to know, Sarah, that you would have like, it's good to kind of just plan it out in the case that it is the same as the previous year, you can get their portfolio any time from their website and just kind of like look at it and have, get a general idea of, of what they're looking at. So that's a great tip. Any others, yeah. any other last minute things you'd like to? Um, oh place? yeah, actually, um, so when you have the portfolio um, requirement sheet, um, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a breakdown of how they grade everything. Um, and sometimes it'll say performance or something like that. So if you look at that, you can kind of judge what to focus on. So I think for like the short animation, um, it it's as, or it's grading like um, the the animation itself, but it doesn't say anything about performance. It just says uh, animation, composition, things like that. So mm -hmm. you know that they want you to focus on um, the composition and the animation rather than telling a fun story. Um, yeah. Whereas for the hands, they say line quality and performance. So they want you to make the hands interesting. So yeah. if the more interesting your hand is, that could boost your score a bit. Wow, interesting. That was the first time I've heard that feedback. That's really great. What a great tip. Um, yeah, so actually look at the score sheet. I mean, that's, it makes sense, but to dissect it like that and to kind of it, it, interpret what they're exactly they're asking for is a really great idea. That's, I guess, why the storyboard is worth so much, right? It's because there's so many things that are being considered in, in, in one sort of exercise. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, um, Thanks so much, Sarah, for, for sharing your portfolio. Um, yeah, we've been working together for so long now. It's so great that I'm really happy to be able to congratulate you now um, after it all. I was so sure, but also <laughs> you never know. And especially with this year, I had no idea that the average was going to be so high. So um, yeah, it worked out and I'm glad all of your incredibly hard work and dedicated effort paid off. That's really amazing. Um, you're going to have a great time next year. I hope it's in person. Me too. <laughs> uh. Yeah.